Caleb Foster and Tyrese Proctor coming back to Duke for another season. This is huge. Let's talk about that and some more of the recent decisions on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Hi, everybody. Dick Vitale. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Locked On Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson. It's so great to have you here with us on Tuesday, April 16th, 2024. Lockdown Blue Devils is your one stop shop for everything going on in the life of Duke basketball and Duke athletics. Tyrese Proctor and Caleb Foster making the big decision to return to Duke. Super excited about what that means for this team. And we're going to be able to break that all down with our good pal, Josh Smith from the Devil's Den podcast. We'll have that conversation here for you on the program. If you have not done so already, please be sure to follow and subscribe to Lockdown Blue Devils for free wherever it is that you get your podcasts. Leave us a five-star rating and written review. Also, make sure that you watch our show daily each and every day on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video, and share it with your friends. Another recent decision made within the last 24 hours for the Duke Blue Devils, we saw Jaden Shute officially enter the transfer portal, opening up another scholarship for Duke. So a lot of things to discuss. And again, here is our friend Josh Smith from the Devil's Den podcast, who's here with us on the program today. Josh, look, it's an exciting time of year. It is an ever-changing landscape in college basketball from the roster construction. And here we are waiting for players to kind of make decisions. How are you, man? I'm well, man. I appreciate you having me on. It's uh, crazy times out there right now. (laughs) No doubt about it. I mean, here we are trying to wait and see what guys will do for the next year. Uh, It's kind of crazy if you would have told someone 10, 15 years ago that look at the end of every season, you're going to have to wait for the ninth man of your roster to determine whether or not he's returning for next season. They might think you're a little crazy or even the best player on your roster Mm. sometimes trying to make a decision whether or not to come back. But that's where we're at in college basketball. So just a lot of getting used to this kind of new phase. It's tough, man. It's like, I think for me, the the biggest shock, if you will, is just you're seeing all these starters from like high major programs. I look at Arizona. They've lost like two starters to the portal. That's not what I was expecting would happen when, when this thing opened up, but uh, it's just the reality of the sport now. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, of course, for this Duke basketball team, we're always awaiting – Uh, NBA draft declarations from players, whether to stay, whether to go. Uh, For Duke this season, they've got two guys projected to go in the first round, and Kyle Filipowski and Jared McCain, and both of them ultimately decided to declare for the NBA draft. And in a lot of ways, obviously you want those guys back. If you can get them, McCain would have done so much with his shooting ability for next year. But this angle, I haven't really discussed yet, Josh, but I do think it's valid With these guys being, for sure, first-round locks, there's not kind of the up in the air, are they going to go test the waters and come back, so to speak. Like They're going to make this decision. They're off to the league, and we know they're off to the league. Yeah, and typically Duke's been that way for a long time, right? Like we haven't had many guys that go and test unless it was, you know, I think Javin went and tested, but it was very early. Like It was established he was coming back. Usually when our guys, they go, they sign with their agents, they're in there, and it's locked in. Yeah, um, I do like that about Duke, that we kind of seem to to make those decisions pretty heavy-handedly. Yeah, no doubt. A few seasons ago, Trevor Keels is in the mix, and he takes forever, ultimately yeah. decides to stay in the process, and uh, now in into his professional career for a couple of seasons. But talk to me about Filipowski and McCain specifically with those two guys making that decision to uh, declare for the league. Yeah, you know, I think Duke fans had a lot of hope that maybe Jared would come back, right? Like, I think Flip, the plan was pretty much in place for this to be it for him. Um, had a solid year, had a good year. He's projected kind of late lottery. It makes sense to just make the move. And obviously, Jared, you strike wants hot, right? This draft has been talked about as being maybe a bit weaker than some other ones. Um, you know, if he's flirting with lottery too, especially if he can land on a good team with a good fit, Um it's hard to blame these kids, right? Like, go go get the bag, go get started. 
Yeah, that's what you do. When you can get a paid, go and do it uh, when you've got that opportunity in front of you. And that's exactly what Filipowski and McCain are going to do. Big shoes to fill on next year's team. But McCain specifically with that outside shooting, you knew he was going to kind of be a priority at the next level. And then they're in the tournament, Josh. His play, Mm -hmm. like putting the ball on the floor and just being able to show that, yeah, I'm a little bit more than just an outside shooter. Yeah, they ran him at point guard some, right? Like he had the ball a lot, and obviously he had that big second round game um, that j- where he just exploded. And then you have it again, and unfortunately in a loss, but against State, he was really the only guy that we had that was able to go get a bucket. So um, would would have liked to have him back, obviously, but you know, no no fault here. I mean, I think if you like you said, if he finds a good fit, um, I think he could play earlier than maybe some some others do. Big-time stuff from Jared McCain leading the way for this Duke basketball team throughout the course of the NCAA tournament and now making the decision to declare for the NBA draft. Duke, of course, learns that they will have Caleb Foster and Tyrese Proctor coming back for another season. That is huge, and we're going to talk about that in particular after we take our first time out here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Lockdown Blue Devils is brought to you by a new sponsor here on the program today. We're talking about Monopoly Go. We've got to listen up for a huge announcement. I've been tracking the leaderboards every day, keeping my eyes on the scores, putting all my heart into it, and super pumped to announce that I'm finally on top. That's right. Obviously, I'm talking about the hit mobile game Monopoly Go. You've probably heard of it. It's downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great mobile twist on the classic Monopoly game that you could play anywhere at any time. You can explore hundreds of Monopoly boards from Las Vegas to Camelot to the moon, all while raking in a huge fortune. Charge rent on iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly. You could charge your friends rent on your iconic properties or go after their Monopoly money by pulling bank heists and taking wrecking balls to their landmarks. But my favorite part is the leaderboards where you can see who's at the top, a Monopoly tycoon, and who's gone bankrupt. So get yourself on the charts. Download Monopoly Go now, free, on the App Store and on Google Play. Monopoly Go is a proud sponsor of Locked On Blue Devils. Our show today is also brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Of course, we know FanDuel is America's number one sports book. They're one of our absolute favorites here on the network as it's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every single game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Moving forward here on today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils, J.J. Jackson alongside my pal Josh Smith. We were just saying uh, a big decision recently made by Tyrese Proctor and Caleb Foster to return for another season of Duke basketball. They made this announcement on the Brotherhood podcast. Ryan Young hosted it all of last season. It was fun to see him hosting the podcast again, despite the fact he has run out of college eligibility. But uh, just a massive decision, Josh, for these guys to come back. Yeah, and I I think most of us really appreciated that Caleb was like, this was never in doubt, right? Like (laughs) 1,000% committed, couldn't even see myself doing it. Um, To get those two is absolutely huge. And I don't think really we've talked enough about what missing Caleb did down the stretch for us, right? Like if we had that other piece, you have the other guard, maybe this is a final four team. Um, so to have that, to have some continuity, junior, sophomore in the starting backcourt, I think uh, you take it. So much throughout the season uh, was talked about the six starters that mm-hmm. Duke had on this year's team, right? Because Proctor missed some time. Mark Mitchell's in and out of a couple of games. Um Jeremy Roach is banged up and hobbled, misses some time as well. And so Caleb Foster was starting for a number of games. And then at the end of the year, he's out, to your point, and and Duke's down a guy that was contributing immediately. In a freshman guard, a guy who's played uh, point guard many times in his life, had a really successful scoring season his senior year in basketball. What did you think of Caleb Foster in the games that we got to see him play for Duke? 
Yeah, I think for me, especially after early on, he had the big what Michigan State game and he was really solid against Baylor. Like, you know, we talked on our podcast of like, man, I want to see this guy just unlocked a little bit, like be more aggressive, encourage him to like shoot a bit more, drive a bit more. I thought he did a great job just kind of recognizing who was around him and just maintaining the team, right? Doing those kind of dirty work, point guard duties, not turning it over, Um but I don't think we've really seen what he can do in the open floor. I don't think we've really seen what he can really do downhill, putting pressure on the rim. Um, that's what I'm excited about next year. I think he could really be like a premier slasher. Which is what would be awesome to, to complement the team a little bit and uh, able to not only slash but knock down the shots from the outside. Uh, I, I think defensively uh, he could be an asset for this team as well. I, I think when we watch – College basketball, the speed of the game is what the freshmen talk about mm -hmm. being surprising, right? And Ryan Young even asked Caleb Foster, what was kind of that big change for you? And he spoke to kind of the speed and, and how difficult it is to kind of prepare yourself for that. Uh, I think you can even take a step forward on the defensive end of the floor as well. Sure, sure. And it looks like we're going to have a ton of size next year, right? Like 6'5 might be the, the shortest starter that we have. I mean, it's going to be... Um, it's going to be a different look for sure. No doubt. So we'll see what Froster can do for the Duke basketball team. Tyrese Proctor, on the other hand, uh, decides to come back for his junior season. This time a year ago, we're thrilled he's coming back for a sophomore year. And we're talking about the fact that this guy is a projected 2024 lottery pick. I mean, felt like the NBA was definitely going to be calling him. We know how the season played out. That's not the case. Now he's coming back for his junior season the decision to come back for another year. Uh, what what do you think of that, Josh? Yeah, I think, you know, for him, it was a bit disappointing, probably personally, right? He had the early injuries and then he gets the concussion and it just kind of continued to set him back a little bit. Um, he had a stretch where he was playing some really high level basketball, especially defensively. So anytime you can get that, you, you come back for year three, um, it looks like the way things are trending right now that he will be kind of a primary ball handler, right? That that's going to be his responsibility. He may be the only captain too, depending on what happens with Jeremy and some others. Um, so he gets the chance to really jump into that leadership role, run the team. And now you got two big guys back behind you again. No, no, no knock on flip, but he wasn't lively. Right. So you have a little bit of just kind of flexibility back behind you as well. So um, maybe a few more options in that pick and roll for him. As a sophomore, Proctor, 10 and a half points per game, uh, had three rebounds, 3.7 assists. That's up from 3.3 assists as a freshman. And then his three point percentage went up as well, 32%. In his first year in college basketball, he shot it at 35% this past season. Surprisingly, a pretty big dip in uh, free throw percentage, 87% as a freshman, 75% as a sophomore, and the attempts stayed the exact same, um, just two attempts on average per game. That was crazy for people to look at as well. Discourse we've been having a little bit about Proctor and Foster. Proctor plays about 300 more minutes of basketball this season than Foster did, and yet only attempted one more free throw. As we're looking at Tyrese Proctor going into next season, I, I think he's got to be more aggressive and yeah. try to do more for this Duke team. Brendan Marks of The Athletic on the show last week pointed out to us that Proctor did not attempt a single transition to the entire season, which was just baffling to me that he did wow. not do that a single time this past season, like I think we've got to see a little bit more of that from him at six foot five. Use your speed, use the body, use all of that. Yeah, you got to get to the rim, right? We got it. You got to get in there because um, you said you just listed it out. He can shoot free throws well. I know seventy five percent is a little low, but I think if the volume was there, um, you know, he goes games without shooting a free throw, right? Yeah. Or like maybe one or yeah. two. Part of that is just he hasn't quite had the burst to, to beat his man. Um, but I think that the handle is good enough. The creativity is good enough of just you got to get in there, right? We got to open things up. Um, you know, I, I know Caleb's able to do that. But I think for, to, for Tyrese to really maximize, that's the next thing, right? Either if that's a strength, a quickness, like whatever that is, learning your angles better, um, you know, I mean, our coach wasn't the most athletic guy, right? Like they yeah. used to call it alarmingly <laughs> unathletic, but he was able to mix it up and get downhill. Luca, not the most athletic guy, but is able to use change of pace, change of speed. So Proctor kind of has to figure that part out, right? What's going to get me to the rim? 
because yeah, the athleticism has been a bit of a question when people look at the next level. I think that it was um, alarming from some scouts from what we've been reading and hearing. And so uh, any way to be effective with that this upcoming season, I think it's going to be huge. It, it's just huge in general, though. I, I think it's kind of our big takeaway that two guards are coming back for next year's team, given the star-studded recruiting class that's coming in, a little bit of consistency uh, and experience at that guard spot. I think it's just going to be so huge. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, especially for me, the defensive potential of next year with Cooper and Common in the back, you got Tyrese and Caleb up there, whoever that th that fifth starter on the wing is going to be. Um, that's where I'm super excited. I mean, it sucks that he went 0 of 9 against State, but two days prior to that, Proctor had maybe the best 10 minute defensive stretch I've seen in a very long time. He was I mean, you might have to go back to Amber for a while. Yeah. yeah, like it was, it was insane how good he was on that end. Um, Sucks that we couldn't talk about get the Houston done, but, game and the uh, yes, I get Cryer and to get yeah. those two steals away, but that whole last 10 minutes was just that that's a different level. Um, so I'm hoping with you got Cooper behind you, some other guys we can get out and run a little bit, you know, really force the issue. You know, doubt if we get more of that from, from Proctor this upcoming season, I think Duke's going to be in a really good spot. And then, yeah, Caleb Foster, it sounds like June. Uh, is kind of the time frame for him to get back out on the court. These guys can play together uh, over the course of the summer. We'll see what other additions are made to the roster and some more decisions coming up as well. So we've got to take one more time out here on the program today, and then when we come back, we'll start to wind down our conversation with our good pal Josh Smith here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Locked on Blue Devils here today is brought to you by our friends over at LinkedIn. Obviously, these days we know how important your next hire can be for your small business. When you're hiring for that small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. This isn't just another job board. LinkedIn helps you find the professionals that you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open for the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, let's keep it going here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. My name is JJ Jackson. His name is Josh Smith from the Devils Dead podcast there with 247. Tell us about the podcast, man. We, re we revamped it about two years ago. Yeah. Um, so it was, you know, kind of in flux for a little bit. We took it over for Kay's last run, um, had a lot of fun with that. Then last summer we were able to have John Shire on. Would love to get him back on, but I think he's becoming a little bit busier. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if we get that uh, get that shot again. But yeah, just had your pal Brandon Marks on. So um, that'll come out sometime this week, probably later in the week. Um, unlike you, we've been able to slow down just a tad in the off season, right? So we're down to about once a week. Um, but yeah, man, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. But go check it out. It's it's available wherever you get your podcast. Yeah, of course, the Devil's Den. Yeah, Devil's on Den on podcast. Twitter, Devil's Den Pod two four seven. So go check all of that out. All right, uh, we've got Jalen Blake's, Jaden Shoot, Mark Mitchell, Christian Reeves, four guys, kind of in the transfer portal to to wind down. How did this news sit with you, Josh? You know it. I don't think it was super surprising for most of us. Um, you know, Jaden was a kid that came in, put in the work. And I think it was, it was pretty evident to me like early in the season when John was like, you know, he's just got a ways to go. Um, and at Duke, they, they're not really going to wait, you know, yeah. unfortunately. So I think he made the right decision. Blake's graduates. He gets a Duke degree. You get a chance to go play somewhere. You know, he's going to play like he's going to go somewhere and he's going to be able to play for a lot of programs. Um, Probably the same with Reeves, just maybe not quite ready for this level. Kept getting injured too, couldn't catch a break. To me, is Mark's the one that kind of hurts, you know? And I think if people have panned out and said, well, maybe it was best for both parties and the way the roster fits, I get all that. Um, but this was a, a high-ranked kid that you've heard the relationship that him and, and Shire had. And um, 
that's the new reality that we were talking about, right? Like these kids are going to just, it's just always not going to work out. Um, but it's tough to lose a two-year starter, I think, to the portal, right? That stings a bit. <laughs> that's never fun. Uh, yeah. they, they mean so much to your program. And uh, Mark Mitchell did a lot for this Duke team, starting 67 of 68 games for the Blue Devils in his time there. What it has done, though, is open up scholarship opportunities for this coaching staff to kind of look elsewhere. Some decisions still remain. We started off the show talking about the fact that, hey, yeah, we're looking for some type of indicator from Sean Stewart and TJ Power, which is quite surprising after a freshman season. That That's the era in college basketball. And then, of course, Jeremy Roach has his COVID year of eligibility to use. However, he so chooses to use that. Yeah. Duke's already been connected to a couple of guys, uh, possibly in the transfer portal to join the team for this next season. What do you think these next few days, few weeks kind of look like for, for the Duke roster movement, Josh? I think things are going to happen pretty quickly, right? Yeah. Like I think they bring in the kid in Brown. It's hard to keep up with this stuff. Dude. It's yeah. like the portal is exhausting. It is yeah. like constant. It's free agency every year in college basketball now. Yep. Um, but I think and it's every day team, to your point. Yeah, like it's every constant. day there's something is, new. Yeah. We need like a, a, a woge of, of college <laughs> basketball or something, but it's exhausting, but I think right now they're looking at the Brown kid. Mike I really Brown like, from Syracuse. Yeah, yeah, I love the kid from Purdue. Uh, Mason Gillis. Gillis. I think yep. that that could be a really solid 3 and D kind of piece there. Um, obviously, they're kicking tires just to see what's out there, but it's it's everywhere. I mean, you look at Twitter, you look at even our message boards over um, at the Devil's Den, and it's just kind of like fantasy football mode yeah. or fantasy <laughs> basketball mode. It's, uh, it's hard to keep up with. Um, I don't think that they're going to get kind of left out to dry, though. It seems like they're doing their diligence and really looking for pieces that fit. Um, I think Amari Williams is another kid they looked at recently. Um, and so they're trying to be deliberate. My hope is just that it doesn't force one of those guys that you mentioned out, right? Like if it means losing TJ or Son Stewart, I want those guys personally just to come back and let's let's run this again and see if they can fill a role that you need. Yeah, and then as we talked about this time a year ago, uh, we're expecting Mackenzie and Baco to be a part of the Duke basketball team, and that's kind of a last-minute hurdle and a last-minute change. And look, it's it's not a given that here on April 16th, all six freshmen show up to play for Duke basketball, sure. depending on how this movement tends to go over the next few days and that sort of thing. But we mentioned Amari Williams from Drexel. Malik Brown, a sophomore at Syracuse this past season, a native from Virginia, visiting Duke tomorrow through Friday. So interesting to see how all of that will play out. And then Mason Gillis, uh, 24, 25 years old. We were having the Cormac Ryan jokes uh, from this past season. He's going to be an, an older player with another year of eligibility to go. But Mason Gillis at Purdue played in the championship game this season and shot 46% from three-point range this year. That is unbelievable. And, uh, yeah, that would definitely be welcomed on the Stuke team. Yeah, yeah. And, and would know how to play a role, right? And that's the biggest thing, too, would understand, like, look, I've played for winners. I want to win. Coming off the bench, starting, can kind of just feel it. Almost like a, a Jacob Grandison type, right, of coming from a good program and can fill a role for you. Um We'll see. It's wild, wild west out there, man. Yeah. Mason Gillis played 39 games for Purdue. So all of them did not start a single one of them, but averaged six and a half points per game on three, three point attempts per game shot, 46%, 20 minutes of action in those games. So you're to your point would fill a role if uh, indeed he ends up that way. Josh, you're the best. Really appreciate you joining us here on the program today. One more time, my friend, promote your show and where people can follow you. Yeah, we appreciate it, man. Good to good to chat with you here. Um, Y'all can find us anywhere you listen to podcasts, um, The Devil's Den Pod. You can find us on Twitter, Devil's Den Pod 247. Uh, we're also on the boards over 247 Sports, so go check out thedevilsden.com, especially if you're one of these portal heads that this is your bread and butter and you love it. <laughs> go check it out. For me, I'm, I'm tapped out, man. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and look, to your point, there are folks out there in the Duke community that are following what players and coaches and what oh, that yeah. the team is following, right? Like yep. we're tracking social media accounts and who's following who. So if Josh Smith starts to follow certain players, that <laughs> might be an indicator that things are happening. <laughs> you never know. You yeah. never know. Yeah. Thanks for being here today, my friend. I appreciate it.
Take care, JJ. All right, that's Josh Smith joining us here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils, and that's going to wrap it up here today for our show. Thanks for your support. As always, I'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you, and good day.